Hi, I'm Father Joe. Recently, uh, it was recognized by a great many people just how close I came to being Pope in the last election, and uh, someone asked what name I would have chose, and I explained to them, you know, I was thinking something like Pope Paris, uh, Pope Sicola, Pope Tart, Pope Gun, Pope... I'll quit now. All right. We got two this week. Dear Father Joe, why is there a need for the papacy? Why do we need a pope? Well, let's start at the beginning. If we take a look at the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 17 through 19, we hear this extremely important line from Jesus. He said to Peter, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, because mere flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I say to you, you are rock. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Now, if we take that apart a little bit at a time, we see Jesus giving a very specific blessing to Peter. And that blessing is a result of God's will, right? Jesus said this wasn't mere flesh and blood. God willed that Jesus give this authority to Peter. Uh, and it was a knowledge about Jesus that nobody else had yet. Jesus then changes Peter's name from Simon, which means pebble, to Peter, which means rock. And Jesus says, I'm going to build my church on you. Now, we use this passage to reaffirm our belief that Jesus intended for our church to have a leader. You'll see in the Eucharistic, excuse me, in the preface on the days where we celebrate popes, we'll see that God, uh, we pray, God, you did not intend your church to be shepherdless. God gave us a shepherd, and we believe that. Now, as Catholics, this is essential to our identity. We are led by a man who is appointed by God in love with Jesus and led by the Holy Spirit. The Pope uses his authority to hold us together in unity and to define what is Catholic. Let's take a look at our next question. Dear Father Joe, what is papal infallibility? When is it invoked? What are ex cathedra teachings? These questions are related. I think they're actually second cousins on their mother's side, uh, so we'll put them together. Um, if you look in your Catholic encyclopedia, there's a great section there that explains why we have a papacy and what papal authority is. Um, I'm going to encourage you to look that up. It would take way too long to cover here. What it basically says is that the church teaches that Jesus intended a system of authority so that we could be in unity with each other and assign to the world of our unity. We also believe that Jesus set this up and guides it by the Holy Spirit. We have proof of that in our everyday lives. The church is not perfect in its conduct, right? You can go through history and see some of our mistakes, but realize what? We're still here, that Jesus has led us by the power of the Spirit through our leaders of the church. Now, what is ex cathedra? Ex cathedra means, in Latin, out of the chair. Okay? And when the Pope speaks ex cathedra in matters of faith and morals, we say he's infallible. He's without error. Now. You'll hear people say, and I've actually had people tell me this, do you mean that if the Pope's sitting in his chair and he says the sky is orange, the sky is orange? Um, no. Ex cathedra is a concept, not a location. Uh, they aren't specifically speaking of a chair. They're speaking of when the Pope talks in a specific way about matters of faith and morals. So the Pope's not going to talk about the color of the sky because those aren't issues of faith and morals. Uh, the Pope has to declare himself to be speaking ex cathedra. He has to say, this is what I'm doing. And in our 2,000 year example, in our 2,000 year history, the Pope hasn't done that real often. Uh, if, again, what we want to keep in mind is uh, we need a lot of information on this, more than we can cover in this time. So if you're new to, you can check out on the web a great site, www.catholic.com. Pretty easy to remember, right? You can check that out and look under issues of papal authority. Now, as a final note, uh, it's clear that the church is uh, only willing to use its infallible teaching in matters of uh, faith and morals. So the pope will not speak infallibly about other things. There's so much to be said on this topic. Make sure and check out that website. Thank you very much. 
Enjoy another day in God's presence. Mm -hmm.